welcome to this week's video we got my floor poured with the uh, pipes there on the floor for the heating water heating in the floor and that's a look at the floor getting poor um, after it was poured it needs a little more work to get tonight but that's a look and then also we got my stove installed in the corner so there's a lot of things a lot of changes got done this week so stick around and i'll walk you through them first of all i um had to get this front entrance adjusted here this is where you step inside the door right here and then this is where you step down into the main house so first of all i had to tear apart this wall that was left standing and then move this post over a bit to make it um, line up perfectly and there was another beam going across the top that i had to take out and we had to replace two of the posts in the middle there so I used um, some new posts put in there, port foundation and footer, but this is just getting that um, post on the other side of my door to fit in nicely so my drywall can come up basically halfway in between and it all look like a um, full mantle around the door coming in. Um, so that's the look at that. And then we got started at putting, pouring the concrete for my fireplace I dug it down about I don't know six to eight inches uh, it'd be I don't know what it is in centimeters but put this wire mesh in there and then started um, pouring bags of concrete in to fill it up and hopefully add some stability to my fireplace that we we'll be building later uh, first of all I installed just the stove um, in this video later I'm going to be doing rock around everything once probably after we move in but I wanted to get it warmed up so whenever you pour the concrete floor that everything could cure because it's kind of cold these days. It's the middle of January and it's about, uh, I don't know, negative, usually negative um, overnight that's in Celsius. And so this is us getting that um, pad poured, mixing sand. I can just use sand off my property because the... Um, soil around here is just almost pure sand so we had sand and then able to get some gravel and cement and mix it up like like you do concrete obviously and they're trying to get it a little level trying to figure get it smooth it out And after we got done that, we got to work at these other posts. So I had to first of all jack up the beam that's running across there at the top. As you see, that's going to be across the kitchen. It's kind of low, but I needed that beam for support for my other beams going across because they were cut into a little bit. So I jacked up the roof a bit and put in these temporary posts and then bought these other posts that are about 6 inches by 6 inches or... I think they're 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters and we built a concrete footer for them and put them in place with brackets on the bottom you can't really see the brackets or the footer very well in this video but that's what we did and tried to make sure that it was level and then i went upstairs and drilled down through the top to get them to so that it's solid the whole way down through then we got to work at the uh, concrete floor so first of all to put a paper barrier down and then put these five centimeters of foam so hopefully the heat from my pipes doesn't just all disappear down in the ground and so we laid this down it was a little bit of a pain because and then we did run out of the foam but I was able to get some more and while I was getting some more we got to work at the fireplace this had cured by now the um, foundation for the fireplace so got to work setting that up I just stacked some blocks up like this I called a friend that does fireplaces and he said yeah I could just use concrete blocks for the base and then I filled it in with gravel so that it'd be a little more solid um, stacked these concrete blocks up because I'm gonna have a hearth in the front and I wanted a little bit off the ground for that hearth but then not too far up because the actual height of my floor to wrap um, beams above is not gonna be very high but I did so I didn't want the fireplace to be hanging in the middle of the air but or in the middle of that space but I wanted it to be at least a little little bit raised off the floor
and once that was all done with the filling it with gravel, we were able to dismantle my fireplace. So my fireplace has got a uh, boiler on top, it's what you see on top there, that's for the, to heat the water, and I'm going to run that through my pipes, probably run a uh, um, radiator in the back uh, bedroom, and then also floor heating, maybe for my bathroom now also, but I, for, me, for sure for my main house, and then maybe for my bathroom, we'll see how it works out for that. But then got the fireplace installed and then started putting this stovepipe on. I got insulated stovepipe to run up through because my ceiling is solid wood, as you may have seen in earlier videos, and I didn't want to burn anything. So I cut a hole in my roof. My cat came to look around, and so got to work at cutting a hole with um, through the tiny groove, and then had to go on the outside and cut back in toward the house. And then here's a look at what that looked like with my stovepipe sticking up. I did eventually actually cut another one of those tiny groove out later because it was still a little closer than I liked it. But there's a look at it. And then once I was done that, I started marking out a piece of tin for my flashing around the top to get it so that no water would come leaking down around my stovepipe. Once I got that cut out and proper, then I put it over my stovepipe. Went up, up, put it over. Got another piece of stovepipe. Went up, put it over my stovepipe, and figured out exactly how many tiles I need to take out to get it to fit nicely. It actually fit fairly well up there. And then I, after I put it in, I put some uh, chimney caulk around it so that it would hopefully seal it all off. It still needs a little work, but I put a cap on top top of it and rose it up so that it would be high enough hopefully to get up past the, the area that it, so I can get a decent draft through the, my stovepipe. And I put this flashing around inside because I was a little worried that it would be too close to this wood. Technically I think you can go two inches within two inches of wood but I don't know for some reason I'm just freaked out about fire. And so I put this flashing around everything and then I filled the inside between the stovepipe and the flashing with mineral wool. If you enjoy these videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And then after that, we got started at working on the floor. So we had put sand down above the um, foam. This is just sand off my property. Put it down so that hopefully keep the pipes that we were laying down off of the foam a little bit. And also just to add a little bit of a um, thermal um, pack there, or whatever you call it, that would keep um, keep some heat in there. And this, um, this mesh worked quite well for tying the pipe to and laying it out 
and then I put in this other conduit for my plumbing for my kitchen so that I'd have that all ready and then here's how I would tie the pipe to the mesh just got a wire ties and tied it down and ran it in loops around and right after we got started with this uh, my family came out to start the first fire And then we got the rest of the pipe installed, put it in loops, and totally skipped the area under my cabinets because I didn't think that I needed to keep my dishes that warm. And then as them coming in and out, the pipes under my basement and the conduit pipe going out there for the plumbing, as I said before, for my kitchen. And then we started packing concrete in under that beam, and then started packing concrete into the house to pour a bit of a floor in here. So. I'll Ran, ended up having about 5 to 10 centimeters of concrete across the floor for, for my floor and then on top of this I'm going to actually put wood so eventually it's going to just be a wood floor but concrete with uh, pipes through it and as we poured the concrete we lifted the um, mesh underneath to get it up into the concrete a little bit and also to get the pipes up into the concrete a bit. I didn't have the best trowel or screed, so I made a homemade one and was able to flatten it out a little bit with that. And then also grab a piece of tongue and groove from upstairs that was left over and use that as a longer screed. It took a lot of concrete for this floor and then also packing it under that beam and around the step. I had made some cavity for the steps going down to the basement from upstairs so there's gonna be a bit of a trap door underneath my steps going upstairs there's gonna be a trap door that I can lift up so that I can access my bas basement from inside my house and whenever I have vegetables and canned goods down there then get down there a lot easier and a lot faster And then here's a look at the real work outside of mixing the concrete. I, was, I mixed 40 bags the first day and then 7 more bags the next day. To top it off, I'll show you what we did with that um, just to get it, everything smoother on top. And then here's us doing the last several concrete, well, loads of concrete. I'm trying to like, check it out, see if it's make sure it's level. And we ran out of concrete about right now. It wasn't very much longer after this. And then uh, look around that night from what it looked like after we got all that poured. And then this morning we bought some more bags of concrete and I took it up the ramp and immediately dumped it because I was trying to dump it right inside the door and it didn't work out too well. And we mixed this up and spread it out here. I didn't really like the look of the floor after um, we came back in the morning and we were able to walk on it and I wasn't able to work on it very much so we got uh, just pure sand and cement and mixed it on top to make a really smooth make sure to level everything out and make sure it was perfect get a little more perfect not perfect but get it closer and this, so that's what we were doing here just getting that smoothed out and leveled trailed. And we got a longer piece of tiny groove to use as a bit of a 
um, leveler to run across everything. It's four meters long, my house four uh, seventy centimeters, so it almost fit the width, and it worked nicely to get it everything around there and to make sure that we were at least close to level. And then here's a look around when we left today. I'm going to have to go back tonight uh, fairly late and try to get it a little smoother once it's a little more workable. Thanks for watching.